I recognise uh, this. Okay, so so uh, enough of the sort of theory. Here's a, here's a nice example of a of an of an, of an inflammatory response at a relatively early stage. This is an appendix, obviously, in which you see this dramatic change in the surface vessels. Just a nice example of how yeah. these vessels are now becoming dramatically vasodilated. The the, the surface of the appendix yeah. is relatively red and flushed. Yeah. We're not yet seeing much of the migration of the polymorphs in that um, the, the, the vessel changes obviously uh, usually uh, precede the, the, the cellular changes in that the vessels alter, alter and then allow the polymorphs mm. to start migrating. So this is an early, if you like, congested appendix, mm. but left a few more uh, a few more hours or days, then certainly the, the surface of the appendix will then start to show the well, cell migration. It's looking a bit, a bit look, more dodgy up here, look, perhaps. In, indeed, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a classic uh, appendix taker of it? yeah. it's, it's yeah. To feel it be quite stiff and yeah. swollen indeed. and um, and much you know, not floppy and, uh, and yeah. soft like, yeah. a, like a normal exactly. appendix. Exactly, so it's showing the classical card signs yeah. of inflammation yeah um here's another example this is to, of a of a patient who i think had diabetes if i if i recall mm. but what we have here is quite a nasty looking uh, red and swollen leg um that there's a there's a line being drawn on the leg for for clinical purposes to sh yeah. to give uh it's obviously got a bit worse than a <laughs> jiggle line isn't it? Yeah. exactly uh, and and you can see that that's looking there's also the tissues beginning to break down because mm. often even though this migration of fluid in cells is a good thing if it causes sufficient tension in the tissues it can actually uh, if you like defeat its own purposes by then starting to cause the overlying skin to mm -hmm. break down. Mm -hmm. So it just stretched up beyond the blood. The blood can't get into the skin. Exactly, the, exactly. The, the skin so, sloughs yeah. off. So where, where the battle is being lost, as it were. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's then the the uh, the, the first of these uh, elements. So the, the the vascular changes. Now let's think about the cellular alterations and, and and migration of these cells. So the players in this sort of component, if you like, are the endothelial cells themselves, the neutrophils, the polymorph neutrophils, and then within the same family as neutrophils, we have macrophages. Neutrophils and macrophages both have this property of phagocytosing, that is, ingesting debris mm -hmm. and, 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 and material into lysosomes and then trying to neutralise that material. Yeah. But the macrophage is the big brother, as it were. Yeah, as the name implies, macrophage. Big, eat, big eater. Big eater, quite so. One of those myself. <laughs> okay. So here's then the... Um, the, the actual a schematic which shows the actual way in which the polymorphs migrate out of the vascular compartment into the tissue. So the, the line across the center here is the, like the basement membrane, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the interface between the vessel compartment above and the tissue compartment below. So here's a vessel up here. And, and that's the tissue, tissue. below. Yeah. Okay, and what we have, you can see a neutrophil uh, being, if it, as it were, grabbed as it's, as it's flowing past by this increase in adhesion, adhesion mm -hmm. molecules that we talked about in, in on the endothelium. And the endothelial cells uh, towards the right hand side here have formed a gap between them because they're contracting up mm -hmm. and then by a, a process given the fancy word of diapedesis uh, the, the the polymorph literally squeezes its way uh, like a like an octopus out of a jar uh, into the tissues adjacent okay so diapedesis is there any particular reason for that i have no idea where that word comes from right. but, it's, but it's a word that uh, i know trips off the tongue nicely yeah. so it's a nice word to know that that's what the, the process is called yeah okay okay Right, so so it comes along, rolls along the edge, yep. gets stuck, spreads out, and gets chucked out of the hole. Exactly, and this is happening. You know, as I say the cells by the by the hundreds of thousands yep. are, are yep. doing this. Uh, okay, so if we come back to our appendix. Uh, we saw the top right photograph earlier on mm -hmm. of this relatively early stage, and I've got a couple of other examples here of this process a bit further along, as it were, when this cell migration has now really begun to take hold. And what you're seeing now is that the surface of the appendix. Is looking different. It's now becoming a little duller, mm. and it's got this so-called fibrinopoietylene exudate. Yeah, there's stuff uh, here. Exactly yeah. so. And the fibrinopoietylene exudate is exactly that. It's a mixture of pus cells and fibrin. Yeah. The fibrin we described before, uh, and uh, acting as a meshwork for the polymorphs as they go out into the tissues. And you now this is now an established uh, acute appendicitis with, let's say, a pus yeah. pustular change. Yeah. Yeah, and so around that, if you look down the, I mean, this is, this is a laparoscopic one by the looks of it, mm. and if you look down through the laparoscopic, you'll probably see some fluid around the appendix and the yep. cecum, perhaps yep. dripping off down into the pelvis, and uh, you need to wash it out so you might get a, uh, a pelvic abscess as yep. a complication. Exactly. Right? So, yeah, exactly. And okay. this one, this one on the bottom here, I'm not sure it's not far off perforation if it hadn't yeah. already perforated. It looks pretty, yeah. pretty ropey towards the tip there. I think. Looks like it's been embalmed. This one. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's nice and recent anyway. Yes, that's right. Yes, it's, it's, very, it's, very, it's very, 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 very current. And things haven't changed in all those years. Yeah, I can still get a bit of sight of the same way. 
Okay, and this is for, just in terms of uh, reinforcing what we've been saying at a microscopic level, here's a, a, a high, relatively high power photomicrograph. What we're looking at here is these, uh, these sort of stranded pink areas mm -hmm. are the muscle fibers of the mm -hmm. appendix wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're, well, they're what's left, if you like, of the appendix wall, muscularis mm -hmm. propria. And in between them, I hope you can make out our polymorph neutrophils these in, here, in, yeah. in, in abundance. Yeah, and so and we've got and lots and lots of these cells with lobated uh, polymorph nuclei. Mm -hmm. And these are the pus so these, cells. These, these are the muscle nuclei, these, exactly. long, these yep. long ones. So yep. If you weren't inflamed, you wouldn't see all these little purple dots. They, they wouldn't. They wouldn't be there long, at all. You just have fellas, you, exactly. Yeah. You just have the nice. They'd be all nicely packed up together, yeah. and and not a not a. And not these a, are just some red blood cells in there. There'd be no cells cell in between yeah. them. Yeah. Um, and also notice that these polymorphs are not sitting within blood vessels. Mm. These polymorphs are now left the vascular compartment. They're sitting within the tissues. They have been diapodied. In diseased. Yes. Yes. yes diapodized. Whatever. Exactly. <laughs> okay. And again, just another. Uh, similar sort of photograph towards the right hand side here we've got some relatively normal yeah. uh, muscle fibers you know, just uh, side by side and you can see the big difference yeah. There. yeah and and as this process you know uh, takes hold and progresses you can see that you know, the body's desperately trying to to prevent the infection usually here from from bacteria within the appendix lumen but as I say, despite that, sometimes this can have dire consequences because the muscle coat of the appendix now is effectively being destroyed by all the chemotactic, uh, the um, the chemical uh, agents and and the necrosis which is occurring mm. around the inflammatory response. And if that if that uh, destruction leads to a perforation, then clearly that has uh, has mm. no consequences. Mm. Yeah. Um, and here is a, an example just of, of exactly that, which is an appendix which has been cut mm -hmm. longitudinally yep. towards the tip. So you can you see can, the, you the can lumen see, here. You can see the lumen, and it's a complete destruction here of, yeah. the, of the lining by this, this yellow soft material, which is pus. Yeah. And uh, I, I think, although it's not as well shown as I'd like, but nonetheless, there's a probable perforation towards the tip there. This here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, and okay. you can see it's fibroperolin X day again. Exactly. So it's really quite a this. quite an advanced uh, appendicitis. And of course, what, what this does is when it gets inflamed, that in, inside the abdomen, uh, it gets walled off by other abdominal structures. So the omentum comes down and tries to wall it off. Indeed. And uh, small bowel and whatever. So, yeah. so the the, the localization on a, a microscopic level, but also in the body where where allowed on a macroscopic level as That's well. Right. Certainly within the abdomen. Yeah. And, and this is the thing that some patients with appendicitis, the thing does get localized and patients can heal uh, an episode of appendicitis yeah. and end up with just a fibrotic appendix. Right. But others, of course, unfortunately, get to this stage yeah. and get risks of, uh, of advanced infection. Uh, and yeah, here again, very dramatically shown is an appendix now, which we've really, in, the, in the bottom left mm -hmm. here cut transversely, and you can see that the wall now of the appendix has ruptured. Mm. And uh, so, so that's not you with a pair of scissors. That's how no, it came. no, that yeah. was that was that was the way it came. Yeah. And and here again, you can see the lumen of the appendix in the top right, mm -hmm. completely filled with a sea of polymorph yeah. neutrophils, yeah. which are now rupturing through the the lining of the of the so appendix. This is, this is the and there are a few residual appendix glands. These yeah. are the lining of the appendix yeah. glands, and you can see they've been destroyed and have made way for the so the polymorphs which are pouring, which are just, pouring just through. Just going through the hole. Yeah. Right. Yeah. God, so it's quite, quite dramatic, isn't quite it? Quite dramatic. Right? Yeah. Okay, so that's the, the the sort of cell migration side of things, and then finally, as I say, with the repeating my disclaimer of not being a biochemist, but just a quick. Uh, foray into the complex, very complex world of the chemical mediators around in the inflammatory response. And you can broadly group these into those which are something to do with the changes in the vessels, so vasoactive mediators, and something which are those which are something to do with the change, the, the movement of the cells, mm -hmm. the, the chemotactic factors. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so a lot of terminology around this. Uh, it's maybe useful just to be familiar with some of these terms. Uh, and obviously, if the listener would like to do some more reading, that, that, then please please feel free to do so. There, there are some of these uh, factors are uh, derived from cells, which are migrating into the tissues anyway. Some of these factors are stored within the cells, ready to be released at a moment's notice. Yep. And for example, histamine is a good example of mm -hmm. that. Others have to be synthesized, um, and they're often synthesized from the neutrophil and, uh, and other cell membranes mm -hmm. and prostaglandins and something called leukotrienes uh, are, are those which have to be synthesized mm -hmm. uh, and others within this group are things like platelet activating factor and other cytokines and chemokines so as I say don't get too bogged down with the terminology but just to be aware that in terms of these factors some are there ready and waiting 
Others have to be produced and, man mm -hmm. and manufactured as the response. So how, how long does it take to produce these things? Uh, that I can't say, but I would say that it would certainly be, it's a, it's a short time scale and that's, you know, we're talking about within, you know, within uh, hours as the yeah. inflammatory response yeah. is occurring. Yeah. Yep. So there's all these acute phase reactants. Yeah, and uh, so one of the, one of the ones we measure is, is CRP, which yep. is acute phase protein, and yep. so that's all sort of tied in with that. So it can can be clinically useful as well as helping in the healing process and the uh, and the acute inflammatory process. There are sort of biomarker, I suppose, yes. of, of information uh, things like CRP. Exactly. Okay, so that's the cell derived, if you like, components. Um, and in terms of the um, maybe again, if it's in terms of clinical uh, interest here, is that. The prostaglandins and leukotrienes that I mentioned, which are these mediators derived from the cell membranes, particularly something from something called arachnidonic acid, um, these uh, are produced via some enzymes which are known as COX-1 and COX-2, the cyclooxygenase uh, enzymes. Mm -hmm. And we use um, aspirin uh, as a good way of, uh, of alleviating the inflammatory response and the pain of in an inflammatory response because these are COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitors mm -hmm. okay so that's why aspirin works i suppose yeah, uh, yeah and then yeah. there are other as i say the lipooxygenase pathway which produces uh factors which increase vascular permeability and adhesion mm -hmm. but yeah that's just a, a sort of bit of a, an aside there and then there are also um and also just to mention the path that we mentioned earlier that these some of these molecules um they don't, they don't seem to have a, a very high press but they're incredibly uh uh, active molecules. Yeah. Uh, PAF it actually has the potency of a thousand times histamine. I'm told by by my chem by biochemical friends. So it's a, a pretty potent agent. You have a friend who's a biochemist. Well, I do. Wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, as well as those that are produced by the cells, there are also those that are sitting and waiting uh, either to be produced or, or, or within the um, the plasma. So within the the, the, the fluid of the, of, the, of the vascular compartment. And this is where the kinin and bradykinin system comes in. Uh, again, we'll quickly rattle through these so you don't ask me any difficult questions. The clotting pathway in terms of activation of the Hagerman factor, thrombolytic system, and complement that we mentioned before, yeah. uh, which again has a whole sort of sub, sub array of, of different uh, uh, of agents. Yeah. Um, and if we then try to just draw this together in terms of what we saw right at the beginning, the, the things which occur in the inflammatory response, put it into a clinical context, we can see that there's quite often a bit of overlap in that these various agents often. Uh, are contributing to more than one of the inflammatory uh, inflammatory uh, changes that we see. Okay. So, for example, um, uh, let's have a look. Maybe we have something like prostaglandins, which not only have a role in terms of the pain that we see, yep. the inflammatory response, but also have a role in producing the vasodilatation. Yeah. Okay. So that's just a little breakdown okay. of, so of some of these yeah, agents. So it's all all things. What well, what's pain for? Why why is it? There? I, th I think it's probably in order to. Uh, well, I th yeah, it's interesting. I, th I think you can think of it in terms of maybe reducing the. The, the movement in the area, uh, pre preventing use of that area in order to, to allow the body to to you know, to to, uh, to heal the yeah, area and to localize um, it. A bit yeah, more, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, again, coming back to our thumb, if your your thumb is hurting, you're not going to use it. You're not going to c incur any further damage. Mm. So you're going to allow the body to rest that area and therefore hopefully heal it. Yeah. So it's probably useful, I suppose. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right, that's just a nice autumn picture to tell me to relax because the rest of it's now just lots of clinical photographs. Oh, okay. But we've also, I think, then dealt with, if you like, the the main issues around the inflammatory response. Just to remind ourselves, then we're talking about a stereotypic response within vascularized living tissues, which is characterized by alterations in vessels and migrations of cells on a background of a very complex biochemical orchestration. Uh, is, it, is that the lovely campus at the University of Nottingham? I have no idea, oh. but it's one of my favourite autumn photos. No, it probably is the lovely campus at the <laughs> University of Nottingham, but the universities are available. <laughs>